Join Jesus where he's already at work. We dream of the day where every home in America is adopted by one or more persons living the prayer, care, share lifestyle. Our host, Gary Kendall, began Love KC with the desire to see every home in Kansas City prayed for. Join with him to make this happen. Now on to the Blessed Podcast. Well, welcome to the Blessed Podcast where we join Jesus where he's already at work, where we live, where we learn, where we work, and we play. And I want to welcome Graham Papadik to the uh, Blessed Podcast today. Welcome, Graham. Hey, Gary. Thanks for having me. Uh, it was so good to have you in Kansas City uh, two weeks ago and to be able to meet you in person. I had seen you on video, but uh, and then we got to meet you in person. It was really great. Uh, man, that was an amazing experience to be out there with you guys. And Gary, I got to say, you're one of the, the best hosts out there. Uh, so if anybody is ever in Kansas City, hit up Gary Kendall and yeah, look me up. he'll give you the, the grand tour of Kansas City. Yes. And you might even to see my car get towed away. <laughs> Graham and I went, went out to eat and um, came back and my car was towed. So that happens. That's a real life with Gary Kendall. Lesson but, learned. That's right. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, great. I'm so, so glad you came. And thanks for working on our Love KC video. I've heard a lot of people say, who is that guy in the Love KC video? And it's Graham Papadik. So <laughs> good job. If you want to see that, you can find all of the, the media that we do over at Love KC Living on Mission. So if you go to our Facebook group, you'll find Love KC Living on Mission. And uh, there are these blessed podcasters here. They're also on our website at lovekc.net, or you can find them on Google Play or iTunes. But if you want to see the video, you can go to uh, lovekc.net backslash resources, and you'll see the, all the podcasts there. So you can watch Graham's video. It's, it's, it's well done. But Graham, tell me a little bit about what you experienced when you came to the Send. I think that people who didn't get to go would, would benefit from your perspective. Yeah, I... Gary, the, the send had been something that God had put on my heart uh, back the first time I ever heard about it in, in 2018. And I was just so fired up and stirred by hearing like 60,000 believers gathering together, praying and worshiping and just uniting in faith. And that had always been something that I said, all right, the next one, whenever it happens, I'm there. So I had pre-registered and everything like that. And then, you know, this little thing called the pandemic hit. <laughs> and... Uh, Fast forward two years, changed everything. changed everything. They had to cancel the event for the past two years. And, you know, I, I kind of just pushed it off and said, you know, that was a, a past season. We're on to, to new things. And then this past year um, around new years, uh, our church was challenging us to just process some past dreams that we've had. And uh, I felt the Lord tell me that he was going to breathe life on dead dreams this year. No, and one of the dreams and one of the first things that came to my mind was the send and yeah. going and being a part of that. And I didn't think that it was going to happen, but um, sure enough, about a few weeks before the Lord opened the door for me to, to go out to Kansas city and be a part of the send. And wow, what a special experience to be united. I've never been with that many believers in one place. And all on the same mission there for the same reason, just like worshiping and giving glory to God. And uh, it, it's refreshing to see, you know, so many people uh, on, on the younger side of things, more my age and just on Yeah, fire. you were the target audience. We were the target <laughs> audience, yeah. um, But to see so many people just passionate about Jesus and, you know, willing to, to go and say, yes, I want to go live on mission and not worrying about what other people may think, what other people may say or, or living with the times, but instead just, you know, caught up in the truth and reality of Jesus. And like, it's so evident in the people that you meet and hearing some of the testimonies of the lives that they've got to live. Um, so that was amazing. I mean, uh, there's some of the testimonies, Gary, you know, better than I of some of the experiences that the people had and the takeaways, like, uh, the number of healings or salvations or just the impact that the send coming to Kansas city actually brought was enormous. Uh, and so uh, being a part of something that big was amazing, but it was also, it was a lot more intimate than that too. Cause I know 
every single person had a different takeaway and like the Lord met them in a unique way. Um, and so for me, I just got to get to sit there and just like the presence of the Lord. And it's a long day, but you get to process things as they go. And uh, it just reflecting on it, such a amazing experience. So grateful for, and honestly excited to see uh, what the organization is going to be doing in the future and to see how I can be a part of it and continue to, to push forward the mission of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing. What It's so amazing what the Holy Spirit can do because he can personalize it, you know, for, for everyone that's there. I've heard so many stories the last couple of weeks, two weeks since this end, as people have just told me what happened to them as they listened or they worshiped or they prayed. And, and uh, it's, it's very, very clear that the Holy Spirit met people in very personal ways. My wife, Belinda, coaches women in ministry. And one of her, she was doing one of her coaching times this last week. And the woman was telling about her husband taking their youth group from their church. And their youth group wanted to wanted to be right down in the mosh pit. <laughs> down in the front. Because that's a big yeah. ask, Gary. That was a, that big, is a ask. big ask. He wasn't all that excited about it, but he but he but he was willing to do it for them, which I think is pretty cool. And he pulled along one of another woman in the church because he needed a female sponsor. And uh, so she was there too. And she had one ear that was deaf. She was deaf in one ear and had one ear that was hearing. And uh, when they were praying from the stage, and you probably remember Graham, where the, the person leading from the stage said, I think that there may be someone here who has a partial hearing loss and God's going to restore that. Well, that was her. Wow. And uh, so she she screamed a big scream as she heard from both ears for the, the first time in years. And uh, that's huge. Her whole youth group got to to experience that. I was, And I was telling that story to uh, Pastor Clint Sprague. You met Clint. He was in the, the suite with us. And he was telling me about a woman in his church. He said, yeah, they had a woman in their church who went to the send in a wheelchair, a motorized wheelchair. And she... She wasn't an elderly lady, but she had a lot of physical physical problems and had been bound in a wheelchair for quite a while. And during the the healing time, she was healed and stood up. And he said she didn't just walk out of the stadium. She danced out of the stadium. And he said, it's been two weeks and she's still dancing. <laughs> so uh, I thought that was very cool to be able to know two stories, you know, that took mm -hmm. place in a great big stadium, but then to actually have like direct ties to the people involved and um, those are those are big things, but I heard so many little things. I don't I don't know that anything's little, but someone saying, you know, God gave them direction uh, mm -hmm. for life, or God gave you know gave them an answer to something that they wanted before, or God spoke to them about something that was very personal. You know, that happened over and over and over. Just virtually everybody I talked to had a story like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's a, it's amazing. Wow, if that doesn't build your faith and. Thinking about the kids in the youth group, just like witnessing yeah. something like that firsthand. Right. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad we shared that together, Graham. Yeah. It we, was can, we could talk a lot a lot more about the send and, and maybe we'll do a whole podcast on the send someday. But one of the reasons I wanted to reach out to you today for this podcast is um, I get to work with your dad, which is a lot of fun. No day is ever boring around <laughs> Tim, Tim Papadic. Uh, any... <laughs> <laughs> he can make anything fun. And uh, so we, as our team has worked, uh, we, we call it's the city's team and the events team that we work on. And so we were talking about how do we help the church understand where the culture really is when it comes to who, who the culture believes Jesus is and what he's about and what the culture thinks about the church. Because we've been working really hard to try to help people to reach back when digital explorers reach out. And sometimes there's actually in this day and time, more people reaching out than we have the church reaching back. And mm -hmm. so your dad was going, we, we have to help people understand uh, what life is like outside of their Christian bubble. Mm -hmm. And that's where you came in. So um, I know he recruited you and a friend of yours, Matt, yep. to, uh, to do some man on the street interviews. And um, so I'm going to ask you, I'm going to play one of them and then ask you the question, Graham, like, what did you learn? You did four or five of these. We don't have time for all of them, but maybe you can tell us, you know, where we can find them later. 
we can put them up on our, our uh, Love KC Facebook page, right? our group page. And uh, if they're on the group page, people can comment to, on them. That's why I want to put them there. But um, love to get you what your thoughts on what you learned. So let's go to one of them now. And I know that people, you who are listening on, on YouTube, um, YouTube, I, sorry, YouTube, iTunes or um, Google Play won't be able to see the same thing we're seeing here. So you might want to go over to the to the uh, either the lovekc.net resources and look up podcast, or um, we're going to post the link, the Vimeo link in the in the chat so you can find it there. But the first one is, who is Jesus? I think you'll be able to get a lot even from just listening. So we're going to dive right in. We're out here today and we're asking people the simple question, who is Jesus? <laughs> really? I do, that's a really great question. I think it's also a really loaded question. Who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? For like religious reasons or for, I'm trying to understand. I don't know how to describe Jesus, I guess. So. Who is Jesus to us? And I can't say I definitely have the answer. Is Jesus of Nazareth? I know a fair amount about Jesus. Again, back, back when I was a child, um, seemed like a good dude. It's kind of the the mix between like the all being and the human. I mean, I think he definitely was a real person. Wow, that's a question that I haven't really like thought deep into because I am more like I think about God, like Son of God. It must be his son for real. I'm Jewish. But sometimes I'm wondering if he left Nazareth. Was there another Jesus in another town? I'd say he's just a guy. Like, I believe that he probably existed. I don't think he's like the son of God or anything. I mean, he seemed to be a pretty stand up Jewish man. Jesus is so important person inside Christianity. On the actual history side, Jesus wasn't Christian. He started off just like everyone else, and then he ended up leading like a bunch of other people who worshipped him because he was like had special powers into Christianity. I know people like follow him and like they you know pray to him and everything. I totally respect that. Did you say who is Jesus? I've never met him, so I don't, I don't know. <laughs> him and Mary Magdalene had something going on there. I'm not really sure what. Well, Jesus is, you know, the Holy Spirit. He's the Son. Uh, Jesus is our, our Savior, the one that died for us, that, that took our sins for us, right? Jesus is the ruler of the world. Jesus was a best man. Jesus is our Lord and Savior, and he's the Son of God. Uh, yeah, I'd say the same thing. Came down to earth, became uh, a man just like us, and died for us for our sins. He came here and helped us get, you know, forgive for our sins. It's something that we believe in our whole lives, that we've actively communicated with our kids, with our family, and we promote in our household. I finally surrendered my life over to Jesus uh, on March 7th of this year. Hmm. So, Graham, it ended pretty positively, but it, it, it kind of started off a little bit brutal, right? So uh, what did you learn along the way? You know, Gary, people would think that uh, the, the clips that we actually took and put into the video, we were like very, uh, we were only picking the bad ones, like the, the people that were interesting and things like that. But, but in reality, every single person that we went up to had such a unique perspective on who Jesus was almost none the same. And it just goes to show that like everyone is truly at a different walk of life in their understanding of who Jesus is. Uh, and, you know, we had kids that were probably 15 years old and we had uh, all the way up to the demographics. And uh, I, I think the, the thing that surprised me the most is that not many people that we talked to on the street said that they like actually knew Jesus and the, the Jesus of the Bible and like walked with him. A lot of people knew him like up here in their heads, but you could just tell by the way they're answering and talking about him that they didn't actually have a personal relationship with him. And uh, it's, it's kind of like hurts to, to hear that sometimes when you, you know, that someone is so close to truly understanding and capturing and walking with Jesus, but at the same time, they're so far away. You know, they, they say that 18 inches, the difference between the head to the heart is the longest journey that anybody will ever go on. It's the, right. the difference between knowing about God and who he is and knowing God and having a personal relationship with him. Yeah. And uh, that is, that's my biggest takeaway is that 
for that specific video that that people are all along this 18 inch journey, way different walks. And that honestly, people, Jesus seems like either a historical figure or something that people have grown out of, like a fairy tale. Like I used to believe that. I used to like pray to Jesus or maybe I'll pray to him in a time of really dire need, but I don't really think about Jesus at all, really. Yeah. And that seemed to be the dominant, the dominant um, place people were coming from. It's almost surprising that you'd ask about him. <laughs> you know, it makes me think, Graham, about uh, why we started Love KC. And one of the primary reasons that we did was just a, a internal sense inside of me. I think it was from God that um, the everyday person needs to know how to live their faith with confidence mm. and know how to lead their friends to Jesus. And a lot of a lot of followers, they 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 know they're struggling themselves to live their faith. And they, they don't feel like it. They really have much to offer the world in many cases for a lot of reasons, which I, I think the enemy sows some seeds that don't help us when we have our own shame or our own problems. But um, we sometimes we feel like, like we don't know what to say or how to say it. Mm. And something like this really helps us to be able to see. Um, you, can, you can see what people might say. And you can begin to just appreciate the fact that if they say those things to you and you're trying to, to share your faith, you're trying to reach out in love, it isn't because you did it wrong. It's just where the culture is. And yep. if we can begin to internalize, if we can divorce ourselves from the outcome of thinking X, Y, or Z has to happen in this conversation, hmm. and we can just show up as a real person who cares and begins to talk about how we found life um, people actually will listen. I mean, I, I experience this in Ubers all the time. It's, but it's always more of a pull and not a push. Yeah. Because I, I'm not trying to take them anywhere. I would love to talk about Jesus. I would love to talk about eternal life. I'd like to talk about the cross, of course. But what I'm trying to do in those situations is really first meet people where they are. Yeah. And stir up any kind of interest and then see where that goes and allow the Holy Spirit than to lead me and to lead that person. You know, they may they may have 10 or 20 journeys like this with Christian followers before they actually even ask a serious question and begin to uh, really seek. But these things all can be little um, door openers. They can be seeds that are planted. They can be things that bring them to a place of readiness. And that the reality is they're probably going to talk to a friend. They're yeah. probably not going to talk to me you know, or you, if they don't know us. So I, I just say we, more important than having your pastor know how to talk about life or talk about Jesus. You need to know how to talk about him mm -hmm. in ways that are simple and ways that are real and the everyday terms, like think small, not large, you know, think sound bites, not sermons. You know, it, when we begin, if we'll begin to engage, I think people actually will talk. I mean, you saw that. They talk to you. Yeah. I, I think that's another good point to bring up is that oftentimes we ask them the question. And in that specific video, um, there's a few people that we had just asked, like, who do you think Jesus is? And it led down these rabbit trails about people sharing, like, deep secrets of their hearts with us about why they're not walking with Jesus now and how they were hurt by the church or this or that. And like in those moments, then we got to say, all right, this is an opportunity to speak truth. And then, so whatever lie that would pop out, we would cover it with the truth and say, like, Hey, this is, this is actually no, like, I'm sorry you had that experience, but this is actually who Jesus is. And this is who the church should be. And it, it was a very cool opportunity. Um, that specific day was, uh, the Lord is moving in a powerful way. And Matt and I got to, to be a part of some really great conversations that, that are going to sit with me for a while. Mm, I love that. And I think that is exactly the way the Holy Spirit works. Like if we can trust him not to have, a, have to have a can to talk, but we just show up and we're available to the Holy Spirit. We're available to people. God can do amazing things like that. And he, he does. He's ready anytime if we're willing. Yeah, it really does take all of us, though, because like they talked to you that day 
or some of the stories I tell, you know, they talk to me that day. But if there isn't somebody else to follow up and they talk to someone else another day, then um, it, God needs, he really needs every one of us uh, being willing to be his hands, his feet, being willing to be his voice. Yeah. And if, if every believer was ready, willing, and able, I think our world would, our world would find Jesus. I, I know a guy who says that after any interaction that he has, whether he's just having a small Jesus conversation or actually bringing up the gospel and things like that, he always prays like he had just planted a seed, right? He always prays that the Lord would send forth laborers and yep. like, plant more seeds. And like, it's just a seed. Yes. But you never know who's going to come along and continue to, 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 seed even more and you know you don't know what fruit can come from that and that's the exciting part about it all it is i was in a uber in atlanta late at night um, last week and uh, the gal who picked me up as a um, uh, artist during the day and uh, she's she's actually got signed by an agency to be an actor mm. and um but she drives uber at night because she needs some money and so she's giving me a ride and we're heading to the hotel and um, she's asking me what I do, which when I explain that I work for Glue, they, first of all, people have not heard of it. So that takes a little, then it's a technology company. What do you use tech for? You know, it's for the, the Christian ecosystem, which I don't use those words, but I talk about how that churches and Christian businesses and universities and networks, et cetera. So I'm, I'm kind of, I'm trying to give that the light the light answer, because I don't think a, a deep answer is going to help anything. And then I said, um, have you seen the commercials? He gets us. And she said, no. So I, I started explaining about the commercials that they talk about the humanity of Jesus. And she was intrigued by that. And her response to that was, yeah, I grew up around the church a little bit. My mom is a Christian and she prays for me. And I said, do you think that's a good thing? And she said, yeah, I think that's a good thing. And I said, okay, well, I pray too. I'm glad to pray for you. How, how could I pray for you? And she goes, oh, wow. I've never had anybody ask me that. And uh, I said, okay, well, I'm glad to do it if you want. She goes, well, I mean, I guess so. What could be wrong with that? <laughs> I said, well, if I was to pray for you, what would you want me to pray for? She goes, well, what do you mean? And I said, well, like, is there something specific? And she goes, you mean that's legal? You can ask for what you want? I thought prayer was like, you just had to be grateful and humble. And I said, well, gratitude and humility are good. But yeah, I mean, God knows you. He made you. He loves you. Yeah. Like a lot of the desires you have inside of you actually probably come from him. Mm -hmm. So what's one thing you want to pray for? And she goes, oh, man, like that, that's that's kind of stumping me. Mm. And I said, well, um, I mean, you don't have to tell me now, but if you think of something, let me know. And I said, if you want, before I get out of the, out of the um, car, I'll pray at the hotel. She, I said, is that all right? She goes, yeah, yeah, I think so. So anyway, we, she didn't, then later, since I didn't like press it further than that, then she came back with, well, you know, there is something I would like you to pray for. And I said, well, what's that? She goes, really, can you pray for my mental health? She said, I really feel like, a, you know, I have anxiety and I, you know, I, I need strength. I need to be strong, but I feel anxious sometimes. And I said, oh, God would love to meet that need, you know. And um, so anyway, we had a really good conversation. I ended up praying for her and she was, she was grateful. None of that was planned, scripted or anything. It was just being available in the moment. I, I had a friend say one time, you know, uh, people in, in the world are, are really starved for love. And, and true human caring feels enough like love that sometimes they don't really know the difference. Yeah. And, they're, and they just look for, they look for it. They need it. And I think if we could show up in that way, it'd make a huge difference. And I think you probably touched into some of that raw human emotion in your, in your uh, interviews. Oh, absolutely. That, that's a great uh, testimony right there. Um, and yeah, like you said, just seeing where the Holy Spirit takes the conversation, not trying to make it your agenda, but just mm -hmm. be listening the entire time. And like that's when the true fruit comes when you're not trying to force anything. Yeah. Just letting it flow.
I probably was an answer to her mom's prayers. Yeah. <laughs> I thought about that later. Hey, Graham, let's watch the other video, another one that you did. You did, I think, what did you say, four or five of them? Yeah, correct. Well, let's watch the one about the church, because I think that it, it uh, really, it, it should be disturbing to yes. us and motivating and at the same time. So uh, let's go there and look at it. This is titled, What Does a Church Need to Hear? We're out here today, walking around, talking to people, asking them, if the church was listening, what would you tell them? Uh, you know, the church is very, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm having a problem with the church today. Very rarely does the church give actual help. And that's what I mean, because that's its original goal is to, you know, be God's hands and feet. Um, but really, it's, you know, they're not really providing real help. Yeah, it's just like I more trust, like, people I know better. And, like, like not that I don't trust the church. It's more that I, like, wouldn't reach out to them for, like, the like, person I'd go for. Uh, I'm not religious. Well, we're not, we're not Christian. I'm not really religious. I'm not a religious person. I think that the idea of the church has been really corrupted, and there are a lot of churches that aren't actually doing what the church preaches it's supposed to do. And so for that reason, I think I'm very hesitant to it in general. It's more about congregation numbers rather than, like, touching people's hearts. And it's easily it's easy to make that confusion when you get into it. When you think of the church, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Priests and praying and ceremonies. A group of people coming together to worship God. Where people go and pray. Habitual things on Sundays, most mostly. If you feel like you've done something and you need like forgiveness, like you turn to God. So, how can the church better connect with people? Um, I think I just I kind of live in the gray area, so anything that feels too boxed in or black and white doesn't feel um, aligned with me. The church? Um, I don't know. I don't think that I would ever go into a church on my own. Mm, maybe change the image because, especially you know, it's not very positive. I have no idea. I never thought. It just feels like a secret that everybody else is in on but me. Well, Graham, that last phrase really gets me. Doesn't it? It feels like a secret everyone else is in on except me. Yeah. Wow. What would you say to uh, people who are listening when they when they just have, have watched that? I'd say that, you know, we have a, a perception that we believe that as a church that we carry and that we walk in. And, you know, while we personally may live that out, that the perception and reputation of the church, like out there on the streets, if you were to pull people, is that the church is completely missing what they say that they do. And they're, they're not providing the help that, that they say they do. They're, they're, it's like a club, it's exclusive, and it's the it feels like the only way that anybody would ever go to a church is that if a friend or somebody close to them had invited them. Um, and it, it feels very tough to get anybody, any forward movement and church goers. Um, it, it, I'd say more people are open to the idea of church, but it has to come from the right voice in their life. Yeah. Where we used to like lead with, would you go to church with me? Like, I think that that leading with that is, um, you know, is something that is probably unlikely in today's world mm. that they're, they're going to say yes to that because they don't know what it is in the first place. And if they do have an idea, the idea is probably skewed in a direction that that is not good for us. Yeah. Um, so I love KC. I'm always telling people, think about it in terms of conversations might lead to a coffee. A coffee might lead to a dinner. You know, several dinners might lead to an invitation to a group. You know, a, a successful group experience might lead to a church service. Hmm. Um, but the goal is never to get them in church. The goal is always to help them discover Jesus yeah. along the way. I was just thinking, you know, that's why Alpha is such a great tool. Is, it is. 
hey, we're not inviting you to church, but we are inviting you to a dinner with a safe space to listen and express your own opinions. Yeah. I was talking to a guy that I got to lead to Christ um, like two or three nights ago. And he was telling me he's um, a Buddhist, he's from Malaysia. He said he was a Buddhist. And um, he, he said, these are his words, I hated the church. Mm-hmm. There's no way that you're going to get me in a church. Uh, but he met me, he liked me. Mm-hmm. And uh, we started a relationship. And, and he, so he immediately like asked me his hardest questions. And um, I said to him, hey, why don't you go to an alpha with alpha with me? Because at, at alpha, we can sit around and we'll have food and, and you'll get to hear, you know, in bite-sized pieces, a story of Christianity. And then we talk about it and it's a safe place. You can leave if you don't like it, um, you know, but give it a try. And he went through the alpha course and accepted and then chose to accept, receive Christ. Wow. But I think it was because it was there was a safe place and he had at least one person he trusted in the group, which was me. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with you. We, we just have to really think differently. And where, where churches used to have this kind of come and see mentality, I think that um, that that isn't something that like if we can get them in church, the pastor can lead them to Christ. I think that by and large now, if someone's going to choose Jesus, it's almost always because of a friend. Yeah. Um, like they don't trust anything that sounds like a salesperson. They don't trust organizations by and large, even if they're a church, you know, but they, they might listen to a friend. Now I think you nailed it. And it, it's kind of like the model of discipleship, you know, mm-hmm. instead of saying, Hey, you should go there. It's, Hey, will you come with me? Absolutely. And it's the, the slow, the slow walk instead of trying to make it a race. And Absolutely. that's where the best intimacy takes place. And I can order for to someone to get to the place where, Hey, I want to accept Jesus. You know, it has to the intimacy and vulnerability has to take place in, in that relationship between the person and Christ. And um, yeah, often that, that just comes with being a really good listener and knowing that people have all different kinds of backgrounds and yep. be listening to the spirit. Like we talked earlier about, and knowing the the correct approach because it's not going to be one size fits all for hey every time invite them to alpha or every time invite them to church like you just need to be present in the conversation and listen to the holy spirit guiding you to to what the best direction would be the next step yeah it's really a it's it's a transformational kind of relationship not a transactional one mm-hmm and we really have to kind of let go of anything that that's going to feel, you know, transactional. I'll, I'll, if I do this, they'll do that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so true. Hey, Graham, you um, carried over some of the things that uh, you had from the interview into the video you did for, for Love KC. I'm going to play that video. And now after people heard the man on the street and the way you kind of language some of what we're about at Love KC, I think it'll help people catch a little bit of the passion you have in the video. I love the passion, by the way. Um, I think that I think they can relate to that. So I'm gonna pull that video up and play it. Great. Uh, just a second. Let me get to the right place. There we go. As Christians, we think about doing what's right all the time. But when will we stop and think about doing the one thing that God told us to do? The one thing that he spelled out so clearly for us to love God and to love our neighbor. So church, apparently our reputation precedes us. He said that they would know us by our love. Well, do that. We're supposed to make disciples and love on the widows and the orphans and our neighbor as ourselves. But do we? It's about time we love Casey. It's time to be the church. It's time to go. It's time to love Casey. Every great move of God begins with prayer. And this move begins now. And join the already 3,500 people who've adopted their neighborhood and started praying. That's nearly 15% of Kansas City. Register and start today. Won't you be my neighbor? Join the movement and love KC. So well done, my friend. 
Hmm. <laughs> but can't you see the themes? Like, I mean, you really can when you think about the man on the street interviews and then the, what's the church up to. Um, I think those like melded into the stream of consciousness that helped you to create that video. That's right. I mean, Love KC embodies so much of what we've been learning out on the street. And I, I think that's one of the things that it's addressing a lot of the needs that, uh, that people have been uh, expressing when we've been interviewing them. And, you know, that's why it sounds so similar because it's like a, a real present need. And this is actually what's going on. And it's, it's on the pulse of, of the life and the culture around the world. Yeah. Thanks. You know, we, um, we have a big challenge I'd love to see with following up on over 500 people who made decisions for Christ leading up to the sun. So the week, the week uh, pre, prior to the sun stadium event was called the flood. And nearly 500 people accepted Christ there. And then if you add the ones who accepted Christ in the stadium, it's around 600 or so people that we're following up up on with Love KC. We're calling all of them. We're giving them invites to Alpha that will be take place online. And we're trying to have personal conversations with them and uh, introducing them to our, our Love KC Living on Mission Facebook group. I mean, basically trying to do anything we can at five different meetings in different regions of the city for meetups. And we'll, we'll keep after that. But the things that you're talking about here, Graham, stick with us and stick with our team as we engage. Because people might have made a decision for Christ, but they, they probably still have all of the same backgrounds mm-hmm. of the people that you talk to on the street. So um, a lot of work to do in front of us. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for joining today, Graham. It's very great to catch up with you and Um, I look forward to hearing what God does with you next. It's been great, Gary. Thanks so much for having me. Honored. And uh, yeah, we'll continue to pray for Love KC and to see uh, how God continues to use the send and and those people that were touched um, and just all for his glory, right? It is, absolutely. So may see you in Nashville, which is where the send is going. (laughs) That's right. That's right. Thanks, Well, thanks, Graham. And if you're you're watching today or listening – Just a a recap real quickly here. We'll put in the chat some of the links to the videos. And also you can find um, this, whatever your favorite place to watch is, I would encourage you to subscribe if it's iTunes or Google Play. Uh, You can also always go to lovekc.net backslash resources and you can find there the podcast. And uh, we'd love to connect with you and and, uh, go on a journey to continually improve and uh, let's, let's reach our world for Jesus. Have a great day. Thank you for listening from the folks at Love KC. We hope you enjoyed our program. See you next time.